This is Inside the Right. So, Tim, we've got some really big news here. According to at least three polls in the immediate aftermath of Trump's conviction, there has been a slight swing in Biden's favor. That was the Reuters Ipsos poll, Morning Consult, and then Echelon, with the Echelon poll even using the exact same respondents and still clocking a two-point swing to Biden's favor. Do you think that this is a sustainable move or do you think it's fleeting? Well, I think it conceivably could be sustainable. I'll say this, and rather than try to predict what happens with the polls, I think objectively speaking, being convicted of crime of 34 (laughs) felonies is not a political winner. And that Trump is like, has managed to gaslight enough of the political pundit class into like being open to the possibility that this could help him or whatever that they're spinning. I mean, you know, it just put it this way. I want everybody to imagine that, you know, back in 2016, James Comey had brought uh, charges against Hillary Clinton and that Hillary Clinton ended up being convicted. Would there have been anybody out there being like, this is a winner for Hillary. This is really going to help her now that she's been convicted of crimes. Like, of course not. I, I, Trump gets treated so differently from everybody else. And I, I think that when you just kind of wash away all the nonsense, it's not that surprising that there is some group of voters that are going to be turned off by this. And, you know, uh, one other thing that I thought was interesting is if you looked at I believe it was the ABC poll, you know, of people that have a negative view of both Trump and Biden, uh, they overwhelmingly you know, were supportive of the, you know, thought that the jury reached the right conclusion and thought that it was bad that Trump was a felon and, you know, thought it was going to impact their vote. So it's like, that isn't surprising. It's not surprising that there is this category of people that don't particularly like either candidate um, and that Donald Trump being convicted uh, by a jury of his peers has moved some percentage of those people, you know, towards either supporting Biden or off of Trump, um, and, you know, as they try to weigh options that they don't really like. I think that's just logical and that all of the other spin post-trial has been, you know, just that, a lot of BS spin. Is this what you expected to see with regard to this polling in the immediate aftermath of the conviction? You know, I I always like my just general um, bias on dealing with polls is like I like to wait a couple weeks and just see. I mean, you know, I think the instantaneous polls are kind of interesting. The echelon thing you mentioned, I think, is interesting in that they went back to the same people that they had polled before and two percent of them had moved to Biden. I, I think that's particularly telling just because it's like those are real humans that they found that changed their mind right so that tells you something um and so uh you know i i I take that as the most interesting one on the other polls you know it just you know sometimes it takes a little while for this stuff to like really simmer with people you know for it to sink in for people to like come to terms with their positions you know they have to their neighbors or whatever media outlets you know start spinning you know what i mean spinning them and so sometimes yeah. there's a lag in in the in the reaction but i'm not that surprised that there's a that there's a slight move to biden i, I didn't think it was going to be a silver bullet um but i also thought that it was going to marginally hurt trump and and so far that's what it seems like Right. Well, you know, the Trump team and their mouthpieces have been leaning leaning in on this idea that this was all some big mistake by the left, even though, again, it's not Joe Biden. It wasn't the Democrats who who brought this prosecution forward. It was the Manhattan DA. But this big mistake by the left and it's going to backfire. And now millions of sleeper Trump supporters are going to come out of the woodwork and they're going to be mobilized. What's your response to that? Because like you, like, I don't know, maybe maybe I've lost touch with common sense, but I also tend to think that being a convicted felon is not, in fact, a good thing for a campaign. Yeah, I just really think that that was all a fantasy in which case I, I do think this. I think that there is a category of people who are hyper engaged partisans who, who may not have been you know, Trump super fans. Right. They might not be the type of people to like put on the red hat, but they're partisans. You know, they're very yeah. anti-left, anti-woke, anti-whatever. You know, the, it's the Ben Shapiro types. Think about right. the people that are watching The Daily Wire. You know, they're basically the, like the, Trump. the Tim Pools. Tim Pool still brands himself as like a disaffected liberal as yeah. if he's like as if he's like otherwise going to vote right. for anybody on the left. Yeah, absurd. So take some of those pre- people that are on the right, but maybe they aren't part of the, you know, the Trump super fan part of the right. Yeah. Did this, you know, just because of the nature of the rhetoric around this, you know, did this, you know, enrage them particularly and and kind of did this make them, you know, um, uh, just come to Trump's defense more aggressively? 
I think that's positive. That's real. You know, there are a lot of MAGA, you know, there are people out there consuming a lot of right wing media that have bought the BS about the justice system that now might be more excited to vote for Donald Trump or to support him than they were before. But like, you don't get you don't get extra credit for your vote if you're more excited right. about it, right? Like right. a vote is a vote. And so are some of those people donating now? Yeah, I think that there's some evidence that Trump's raising more money now. And I think that there's some evidence that he's kind of consolidated people that were already going to vote for him anyway, but maybe reluctantly. And now maybe they have a little bit more enthusiasm. But that's very different than like winning over new people, you know? And, and it's just hard to see how being convicted of 34 felonies is winning over people that didn't like Donald Trump in the first place. And, and I think that, that they're really, that they're either spinning or they're buying their own BS if they think that's happening. Right. Char Charlie Kirk uh, posted online, I support Trump more after this crap. We must win. Like now Charlie Kirk is going to cast his one single vote for Donald Trump even harder than he would have cast it before. You You're know? already a Trump propagandist. Like how much right. more could you support him, Charlie? Yeah. yeah, like the whole thing is just, you know, all about these, you know, right wingers being in their feelings. And, you know, the, you know, they, they always like to call the left snowflakes. And, and that was all just a bunch of projection because they're all a bunch of snowflakes. They're sensitive. And, they, you know, if they get, you know, if they have to uh, see accountability for somebody on their side, now they're going to lash out and pretend like they're really mad and have a temper tantrum. And that's fine. I mean, I, I think that's real. I think that there are some right wing, uh, you know, hyper online, you know, uh, activists that are more angry now or more ex enthusiastic now. But I, I, don't, I don't think that that, you know, is that relevant to the, to the voting group that's going to decide the election. Well, what undermines their argument is that at the same time that they're decrying Joe Biden's weaponization of government, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, is on trial literally right now, like literally today. So it's really hard to claim that Joe Biden is weaponizing the government against conservatives when apparently he's allowed the government to be weaponized against his own family. Like, do you do you really think that Don Jr. would have ever stood trial while Donald Trump was president? Uh, well, I don't know, maybe because he might have got a Dewey. Um, but uh, I like, look, I, I this is where I think the Democrats need to bang the drum on this. You know, sometimes the Democrats are a little bit too sensitive. And I, and I think that there's some sensitivities Biden himself, I think, you know, obviously is not going to go out there and try to use his son as a political cudgel, um, you know, but uh, other Democrats can. And, and I really would like to be hearing from more Democrats that are rubbing this in the face of the, the rubbing Republicans hypocrisy in their face and in the face of the public. Yeah. And just be like, Guys, these guys are selling you a load of bullshit. If you think that the justice system is out to get the gov the Republicans, then like, why is the president's son on trial now? Why does he have another trial date on a different, you know, crime in September? Both of which are kind of, uh, you know, not exactly, you know, top level felonies. It's not like right. Hunter was out there stabbing somebody, uh, you know, right. the gun crime, uh, you know, he should be held accountable for his crimes, but it, it was a paperwork violation, you know, so it's not like this is... A situation that is very that very clearly demonstrates that this Justice Department is not acting in a politicized way. And I think the Democrats need to make that point, even if it's a little crass. Well, to that point, then, do you think that I mean, more broadly, I know that Joe isn't going to talk about Hunter, but should Joe Biden be bringing up the idea that that, you know, Trump is now a convicted felon? And I, I know I know the hesitation for him is that he doesn't want to lend even more credence to the optics or the narrative that that he had something to do with it. But they're all blaming him for having something to do with it anyway. And so at this point, like you can either say nothing and still get the same criticism or at least just acknowledge this major glaring weakness that Donald Trump is contending with. The fact that he's a 34 time convicted felon and still get blamed for it. So if like if nothing's going to change on the right, if they're going to launch the same attacks regardless, shouldn't he at least take the opening and, and at least uh, just you know, acknowledge it. Uh, absolutely, I gotta tell you, I don't understand. I mean, I get, I get the point they're trying to make. The David Axelrods of the world, uh, you know, who say that Biden should take the high road and should not play into the Republicans' hands by making this seem politicized. But like, the Republicans are going to make this try to make this seem politicized, no matter what Joe Biden does. Right. Uh, like, the they're Republicans, already doing it. They're already doing it, right? And and with deranged lies and delusions about how Joe Biden ordered this hit on Trump, or whatever. When it was like he has no authority over the Manhattan DA. So yeah. to me, like it's Joe Biden and it's the Democrats' obligation 
to make sure people know the truth and to fight back on this and to say, no, it's the Republicans that are lying with this. It's Donald Trump that is a convict surrounded by convicts. You know, it is Donald Trump that is attacking the justice system. You know, we are playing things fair and square. That's why my son, I mean, that's why I like, you know, that's why the Hunter thing, I think, makes a lot of uh, sense here. And, and and point out that, the, that you know, this person uh, is seeing accountability for his own actions. He's a felon. As a country, we are better than this. And he's trying to drag us all down and act like the system's rigged, you know, because he, you know, won't be a big boy and just accept responsibility for what he did. I, I think that Joe Biden has to make that case. And I think the related case that's related to the fear about this election and driving fear, uh, you know, increasing the salient, salience of worry about an, a second Trump term is if Donald Trump gets in there now, this question of whether or not he's going to leave or wants to leave. If jail's waiting for him on the other side, like what do you think that Donald Trump is going to try to do while he's in there? Right. And I just think the threat of that is so great and that it's important that the Democrats and the Biden administration talk about this and talk about his threat, talk about his attacks on the rule of law, talk about his felonious actions. And and if Republicans want to say he's politicizing it, well, whatever, they're going to say that anyway. And I, I just don't think that you can you know, let them gain the system like this. You got to fight fire with fire. Right. Perfectly put. Let's finish off with this. Donald Trump, for his part, seems incapable of talking about anything other than his retribution tour for his own prosecutions. Like he he isn't even really pretending to have an agenda other than that. Like at least before he would promise to fix the water pressure and showers and flushing toilets. But even now that's gone. The cars. He did bring up the cars. To the cars, yes, yeah. But I mean, the water pressure was a big one, and that's gone to our dismay because that's that's an important issue. Um, mm -hmm. But do you think that that's going to have an impact on the folks who tune in later, and you know, the the low information voters, p people who you know aren't paying attention to politics, uh, tune in September, October of an election year, and then all they hear is not 2016 Trump, you know, and, and for all the issues that people have with Trump, at least he had some, at least he had it with some charisma, right? Um, but now, like, that's gone. It's just replaced by this, like, this aggrieved, uh, uh, you know, again, retribution tour by him. Uh, I, th I think so. I mean, if he can't stay on, drive a message, there's some messages that could work for him with Joe Biden. I'm not saying that that would be true or credible, but if you just look at the numbers, um, people are unhappy with Joe Biden about inflation and the border and stuff. If he could focus on that stuff, I, obviously that would be preferable than talking about, you know, his own bloodthirsty desire for revenge and like yeah. relitigating the 2020 election. Uh, I just don't know if he's capable of that. And I, I think that the the big thing for Biden here, one thing is how and how Republicans are playing into this. You saw this week that 10 Republican senators said that, like, they're not going to do anything this year um, in protest of not that they were doing right. much before, but in protest of this verdict in New York. And to me, that should play into the Biden's hands and the Biden campaign's frame on this on this election. Biden's campaign's frame needs to be. We actually are trying to solve problems that are important to you. We we care about you. We're responsive to, to voters' concerns. You know, maybe they don't love every solution they're going for, but that but the, Joe Biden is doing serious governing that's trying to address the issues Americans face in a bipartisan manner in a lot of times. Trump only cares about himself. Trump only cares about staying out of jail. You know, Trump only cares about his own narcissism. And the Republican Party only cares about serving Trump and Trump's narcissism. I think that's a that is the right frame for Biden in this election year. And I do think that over the past couple of days, at least the Republicans have play, been playing into his hands on that a bit. Well said. Uh, with that said, for those watching right now, if you want to support the work that Tim's doing, please make sure to subscribe to The Bulwark. That's his YouTube channel. Again, very important that we build up this entire pro-democracy ecosystem from left to right. What Tim and his colleagues at The Bulwark do is especially important because it helps give a permission structure, you know, better than someone like me would give a permission structure to those independents or former Republicans or current Republicans who are looking not to, you know, uh, uh, have no other option other than Trump. So again, make sure to subscribe. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. I'm Tim Miller. This is Inside the Right.